Well, good afternoon and welcome to the West Ham uh, Voice. Thank you for joining me on a Wednesday afternoon and it's the beginning of a long weekend. Um, so that's nice, isn't it? Um, I thought I'd do an update on some of the transfer rumours that are knocking around because there are so many to try and keep up on. I just thought, look, throw them all together and give you an update uh, on, on the latest ones and try and give you a bit of an update on something else, uh, other things that are happening. So let's get it over and done with. Kurt Zuma, he was in court today. He got 180 hours uh, community service. Let's hope that's over and done with now and we'd no, hear no more of it. And um, the one one transfer that I'm not going to talk about, but it's still quite, quite uh, up in the news there, is the whole thing with Naif Aged. Uh, the Moroccan uh, centre-back who plays for uh, French club Rennes. I, I don't know. We keep hearing various stories, don't we? We keep hearing that um, a, a deal has been agreed uh, and it kind of started off at around about £10 million and, and then it's all of a sudden around £20-odd million, £25 million. And now apparently Rennes want something like 40 million well let's just get that over and done with now because with the greatest of respect and i'm sure he's a very good um prospect a, a good up and coming 26 year old central defender but at 40 million pounds i'm not so sure that that deal would happen uh look i don't think it's going to be anything like 40 million pounds in fact i don't even think it's going to be anything like uh, 25 million pounds i think it's going to be around the 10 15 million mark with add-ons etc maybe taking it to up to 20 but anything beyond that for a player that isn't really proven in the premier league i think would be a bit surprising despite how how good he may be but i'm going to talk to you about what the, the first um transfer target, which has been mentioned uh, a few times before uh, uh, around many social media channels, West Ham channels, uh, and this one as well uh, back in uh, January. And that's, of course, Nathan Aki. Now, Nathan Aki valued at around 30 odd million. Now, look at that. If Nathan Aki is valued at around 30 odd million pounds with uh, all the experience that he has in the Premier League and so on, would you really expect us to pay 35 or even 40 million pounds for Naif Aged? Not so sure. No difference in the age. Nathan Aki is only 27 years of old, whereas Aged is 26 years of age. Uh, he's still got a contract, Aki, uh, with uh, Man City until 2025. But he has been told, uh, because he's not getting as much game time as, as he wants to have, he has been told that if, a deal, if an offer comes in for him, then uh, it looks like he may be on his way in this summer transfer window. There's going to be no shortage of takers. Uh, Aki is uh, Premier League proven. Uh, he's uh, a really, really decent defender, uh, central defender, can play at left back as well, uh, uh, left footed, as I said, 27 years of age. He developed in the Far Nord youth ranks uh, and signed for Chelsea way back in 2011. He made some decent progress in that team between 2012 and 2017. And he also played alongside Kurt Zuma as well. Uh, Left-sided defender, as I've already said, which is something that Moises kind of alluded to. He's, all, he's said, I want a left-footed uh, central defender. You know, uh, it will make it much, uh, you know, much more balanced in the team for him. It means that Kurt Zuma can play out on the right side of defence rather than having to fill in on the left side. Uh, Bournemouth bought him. Um, uh, uh, sorry, Bournemouth uh, bought him from Chelsea, and then uh, when they got relegated back in 2020, uh, they sold him to Man City for a fee of 40 million pounds. Uh, since then, he's only just made 40 appearances in total for City, which has included uh, um, uh, 27 appearances in this season just past. But they all uh, haven't all been as a starter either. Very talented defender, but with such fierce comp competition in Manchester City for defensive roles, Aki has seen far less uh, game time than he would have liked to have had. Guardiola has always spoken quite highly of him, uh, but it doesn't sound like Guardiola will want him to leave. But being an ex-player himself, Guardiola knows, knows the full value of a footballer wanting to be on the pitch rather than bench warming. And all fair dues to Nathan Aki, he wants to play football. There's a lot of footballers that are accused these days of just taking the money and sitting on the bench. Na uh, Aki is not one of them. He's a Netherlands international. Um, he's still got three years left on his contract at Man City. And as I said, there's going to be no shortage of takers. So what will, I, what will Man City uh, expect to get for him? There's been rumour of 25 to 30 million pounds, but I think it could be more than that. Um, the likes of Newcastle are in for him uh, and plus other uh, Premier League teams are lurking around. I think um, if a decent offer comes in, and I think the offer would be around about 30 with maybe plus add-ons, 
maybe but we've also got to put it in context you know we bought zuma for only 26 million plus add-ons and would you argue that uh, zuma and ake are they on the same par perhaps but I think given that Man, uh, uh, Man City know that there'll be no shortage of takers for him, uh, they'll probably be looking at around the 30 mark, maybe with a few add-ons on top. Look, we need a replacement for uh, the ageing uh, Ogbonna, who's back, uh, who looks uh, like he signed an extended deal for a year. Uh, I heard the other day that uh, he was meant to prove his fitness over the summer in order to get that contract. But apparently we're hearing otherwise. Um you know, Aki's got he's got everything that he, he needs to be a great replacement for uh, Ogbonna. Uh, all right. Many people are going to say for a central defender at five foot eleven, he's not quite tall enough. But he proves, you know, he's got uh, good aerial win uh, uh, duels of 73, averaging 73 percent, 52 percent ground duel uh, wins and a 90 percent pass success rate He's very, very comfortable on the ball. On top of that, Aki can play in a back two, central back two, or he can play in a back three. And of course, as I've already said, he can also play in, uh, uh, in, uh, as a left back as well. He's had overall, with all the clubs he's played for, 211 se senior game appearances for all the clubs. And of those, he spent a, a quarter of his time, senior career time, playing as a left back. As I've said, 27 years of age, Dutch uh, international, Champions League experience, Premier League experience. Um, Ake would undoubtedly be a superb acquisition. And I can see him forging a really good partnership at the back there with, uh, with Kurt Zuma. What's not to like? I'd like this one to go through. I'd like us to sort of go full out and get a player in that's got the experience that can hit the ground running. Uh, because even with uh, Ogbonna back, you know, we're going to be looking at long term. Ogbonna's only got another year uh, added. So uh, ne end of next season, Ogbonna will be leaving the club. Um, Craig Dawson, also another year. Uh, he'll be leaving the club. Uh, another defender. Um uh, Creswell. Apparently, he's only got another year left as well. So you can see we're going to have quite big gaps at the end of next season. So why not plan for it now? And with someone like Nathan Aki coming in, I think that will be a very, very good uh, uh, purchase by West Ham United indeed. And staying with uh, um, Man City, uh, also, Alexander Zinchenko uh, is apparently uh, available to be moved on. Now, he's got a contract till 2024, valued at around uh, £20 million, 25 years of age. And he is a left back. Uh, we saw a very emotional Alexander uh, Zinchenko speaking ahead of the Ukraine game against Scotland at Hampden Park tonight, which he thanked the Scottish fans because they're all going to take part in singing the Ukraine national anthem. The game has a huge uh, significance because uh, the winners of the game against uh, between Ukraine and Scotland then go on to meet uh, Wales at the weekend uh, to, for another playoff game. Uh, and the winners of that will see themselves in this winter's World Cup finals on a domestic level. As I've said, he's understood to be, uh, to be uh, allowed to leave Man City because much the same as uh, uh, Nathan Aki, he's not getting a lot of game time. He's uh, 25 years of age. He's been with Man City since the age of 19, having joined them from Russia club, uh, Russian club uh, UFA or UFA. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's just three initials, UFA. Uh, he joined them for a modest fee in 2016 for just under £2 million. He developed through the youth ranks of uh, Monolith uh, Lichiskiv uh, and Shakhtar Donetsk in Ukraine. He was a crucial member of Shakhtar's team in the 2013-14 UEFA Youth League. Uh, he moved to Russia on a trial to for... Um, uh, uh, Russian club, Ruben Kazan, but he was picked up instead by Russian Premier League new boys at the time, FC UFA. UFA. His breakthrough came through in the 2015-16 season, where he made 24 first-team appearances in the league and also appeared twice in UFA's Russian Cup campaign. His campaign with UFA earned him a spot in the, in the Ukraine national team, and he made his international debut in the Euro, Euro qualification match against Spain in 2015. He's only five foot nine, no taller than me, really. Uh, Zinchenko is the perfect height to be a midfielder uh, with close ball control and dribbling skills. But when he joined Man City, he was playing out on the left side of midfield. Uh, but uh, Guardiola converted him from an attacking left winger into a left back. And he can also play as a left wing back as well. 
In his time at City, he went out on a short-term loan to uh, PSV Eindhoven for a period of time. Um, and he made he's made 128 appearances for Man City in all competitions in the time that he's been there. But like I said, with like, likewise with Aki, uh, there's fierce competition at the club. And, uh, and this season alone, he's only made 28 appearances, which only 18 has been as a starter. Uh, now, in those uh, 28 appearances, he's made five assists. And for a left back, that's not too bad, is it? Creswell has made seven assists this season and he's played a lot more game time than uh, uh, Zinchenko has. When he uh, at uh, um, uh, Man City, he's played primarily, almost exclusively as a left back, especially throughout the whole of last season in the 28 appearances he's made. But as you can see, you've seen him play. He's a very attack minded left back. Uh, but having said that, he's not shy of his defensive duties, completing 11 clearances last season and 14 interceptions. He also possesses excellent pass accuracy rate of over 90% and he clearly loves taking players on. And maybe it's that left winger instinct in him uh, with a 58% uh, uh, take on success rate. Look, just like our centre backs, we need a left back. We need uh, we need someone that not only can be a backup to uh, 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 Aaron Criswell, but someone who can actually compete with him for that role. And uh, why not Sinchenko? Again, Premier League experience, Champions League experience, Ukrainian international, forty-eight appearances with eight goals for them, valued at around I don't know fifteen. Maybe the maximum 20 million. Um, would you turn this player down? I don't think so. So between Ake and Zinchenko, we could actually get two players in for give or take 50 million pounds. Now, that is a lot of money, but it's not that much money when you start looking at the fact that you're investing in the future as well. Nathan Ake, 27 years of age. Uh, Alexander um, Zinchenko, 25 years of age. But um, if you want to move on for it with another left back, then there's Arthur Thiat or Thiate, Thiate. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm crap at pronouncing names, so I do apologise. Arthur Thiate, despite rumours uh, suggesting that we're close to signing left-footed centre-back Nayef Aged uh, from Rennes, the latest story is that we're looking at this left-footed left centre-back that can also play as a left-back as well. Now, 22-year-old Theate is a product of the Belgian Genk uh, Academy, who then flitted between Genk and Standard Liège uh, throughout his youth career, uh, until he moved on a free transfer to Oostend in the summer of 2020. Uh, he made 40 appearances for Oostend before moving on loan to Club Bologna in Italy in the summer of 2021. The loan move uh, is with an obligation, on my understanding, is an obligation to buy um, uh, 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 this summer. Now, look, um, when, when there's an obligation to buy, normally it's a stipulation that a player has got to make a certain number of appearances. And I'm sure that he's done that because he made 31 appearances for the Italian club uh, in the season that's just passed. However, with the rumours that Bologna manager Sinisa Mihailovic is planning to change his formation next season to a back four, it looks like Bologna are going to be stuck with the player that they're not likely to use so regularly. Which is why there's rumours that uh, Theate is uh, available uh, on, uh, on a transfer. Now, he's valued at around about £8 million. His style of play is a very is very much like a throwback to the old-fashioned, no-nonsense type of uh, defender. Yet, he has the skills and the attributes that you would uh, expect a, a modern-day defender to have. He's comfortable on the ball. He carries the ball forward. He does short, short bursts uh, uh, of pace. Uh, and uh, he, he's quite comfortable with, with the ball at his feet. Um, he's considered, though, as a proper defender, to be quite of a quite a brute when you come up against him and he's a real in your face kind of what Craig Dawson ish type of defender he's quick to close down and get tight on his opponents uh making well-timed tackles and as I said by using his quick pace in short distance into distances to make uh uh, uh, the, 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 uh to get to uh, uh the attacking uh players in addition to playing on the left side of a back three, he is also ca capable of playing as a wing back. But look, the stats so far suggest that he's more of a back three central defender than he is uh, a wing back. Now, uh, I compared his stats to Naif again, but I thought I'd throw in uh, sort of a look at Izzard Diops and Craig Dawson's stats too. And I'll explain why in a moment. 
Now, for aerial duels, uh, when you compare the four players, uh, he comes behind a Gerd and Dawson. For ground duels, uh, he comes behind a Gerd and Diop. Uh, plus, he does very well in number of clearances, interceptions, and uh, and blocks. Overall, between a Gerd and uh, um, Diate, you would argue that Aguerd has got uh, the march on him. He's got slightly better, well, a lot better stats. But then, he, of course, he has four years on this player, uh, Aguerd being 26 years of age uh, and, and Theata being only 22. Aguerd has more uh, game time experience as well. So with West Ham also primarily playing with a back four, but on occasion uh, switching to a back three, Plus the fact that it looks like a Gerd is going to be signed. Um, do we need another left-sided centre-back? Well, if there's a chance that Theate could be added to the ranks and be utilised as a left-back, then yes, he will be an alternative choice. Um, and also, the reason why I've linked uh, uh, Diop stats and, uh, and uh, Dawson stats are because those two players are rumoured to be leaving West Ham. Now, there's an awful lot of rumour about Diop that he could be going to the likes of Lazio. Uh, there are other teams like court, Europe, Europa League quarter finalists quarter finalist Leon, who apparently are also interested in him. Um, and uh, it, it's, there's a potential that uh, if we do get a centre back and if we do get a left back in, then uh, Diop, Diop could be leaving the club. But also Craig Dawson apparently wants to go back up north. Um, but even though he's only got a year left on his contract, well, um, so has Diop. They both have one year left on their contracts. Uh, there's speculation that, excuse me, one of the two could be moved moved on. So, Looking at someone like Theate and maybe like um, a Gerd, or looking at um, uh, the players I've, I've already mentioned, like uh, um, uh, like Zinchenko and also Ake, you could see the possibility of um, Diop move, moving on. Um, look, I like Diop, um, but this isn't about Diop at the moment. I, I think, you know, Diop uh, still has a future at the club. But if we are looking at uh, replacing some of our central defenders and are, you know, and looking at uh, backup or someone to compete uh, with Aaron Creswell, then the likes of Theate could be a, a, a good uh, uh, investment indeed. At uh, £8 million, £9 million, he's a Belgian international as well. Again, another good prospect. Let's move into midfield. Look, I um, talked about Josh Brownhill in my uh, West Ham Weekly show on Monday. And I kind of was, I didn't want to be too dismissive of him, but uh, I kind of suggested that maybe there are other players that can play in that role. What I didn't know at the time was that two years ago, uh, two years ago when he signed for Burnley, um, uh, Moyes was actually in for him and he actually, Brownhill actually actually had the option of choosing between one Claret and Blue team and another. And at the time, he thought that uh, the choice of uh, going for Burnley was the better option. Burnley were, uh, uh, more, uh, uh, were in a better position in the league than us. At the time, we were struggling with um, uh, with uh, relegation, etc. At, at that time. So he thought that perhaps uh, going to Burnley was the, was the safer option, so to speak. Uh, but how things have changed in the last two years, of course, uh, and um, and now it proves that uh, if we are interested in him, Moyes is uh, sort of looking at uh, bringing the player back again. He seems to be a fan of, of him. Moyes regards Brownhill as a workhorse, a player that will cover an awful lot of ground, uh, who will not shy away from uh, getting stuck into challenges, and a player that would actually add some steel to our central midfield. We've been accused at times of having a, a sort of a, a weakness there uh, in, in central midfield, and we kind of covered it by getting Socek in, and Declan is very competitive competitive as well. But uh, we need someone to, who can back up as well. We need someone that can come in to add even more still. And Moyes will look at this player as being that kind of player that can add some a little bit of strength in that central midfield role. He's no nonsense. Uh, he hasn't got a lot of flair. Uh, but that steel I mentioned fills the gaps where at times we've been left wanting. Uh, the simple fact is we need strength in numbers as well. Uh, we need an alternative to Declan and Socek when we need to mix things up. And when we're, when we're especially when we're playing against teams who hold have a lot of possession of the ball, we need to have that solid solidity in central midfield. Look, um, we know that um, we know that Noble has retired. We know that Alex Kral uh, is going to be uh, not going to be kept on from from his role uh, uh, from his. Uh, um, uh, loan spell. And uh, when we're short of midfielders at the moment, we kind of put Lanzini in that role, who hasn't really let us down, but he's not that natural, defensive-minded midfielder. 
Look, uh, in 2016, at the age of 21, um, he moved to Bristol on a free transfer. He spent four seasons at the club before move, making his move to the Premier League in 2020, where Deitch, Sean Deitch signed him for a fee of £8 million on a four-year deal. Um, the, 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 his stats, if, if you compare them to the likes of Declan and Socek, they're decent. 198 ball recoveries, just over 77%. Uh, 77% uh, pass success rate, 73 tackles, which are only seven short of the number of tackles that Declan uh, won last season. He's got a 59.5% a aerial dual success rate and a 51% ground dual success rate. So his record is quite decent. Um, and uh, to further demonstrate uh, his uh, uh, his uh, defensive duties, uh, he's good at uh, winning the ball back. He's got great interception numbers, great clearances, great uh, blocks as well. Look, 26 years of age, valued at something like £10 million. Um, if we don't go for the big name players like Phillips, uh, Bissouma and all the other names that we're being linked to in central defence, uh, central midfield, would Brownhill do the job? He's not going to be a glam glamorous purchase, but he'll certainly probably do a job for us in the centre of midfield. And then we have Amadou Onana, another central midfielder. Now, I talked about him in the January transfer window. Six foot six giant Onana who plays for Lille in France. Uh, the story originally broke around about the last transfer window, suggesting that we hold, held an interest in this former Hamburg defensive midfielder. He moved from Hamburg to French club Lille uh, last August for a fee of £6.3 million, signing a five-year deal till 2026. Onana's value has increased uh, already to around about £10 to £15 million. Uh, and especially with the club, uh, French club suffering from the French TV footballing rights uh, falling uh, falling away, it looks like uh, finishing 10th in the league as well, not getting any European football next season. It looks like they may have to cash in on one or two of their players and Onana could be one of them. Despite his young age, 20 years of, uh, of age, his stock has risen uh, to quite quite a big prominence in short space of time. He developed through the Hoffenheim youth ranks before moving down a league to Hamburg in order to get some game time. Uh, he had opportunities to move to teams like Borussia Dortmund. Bayern Munich were interested as well. But by moving down the league, he knew he was going to get more game time at Hamburg than he would at some of these other big clubs. This has ensured that he's uh, got himself a full season of playing first team football. And that ensured his move to Lille. He can play as a centre-back. He can play as a central defensive midfielder. He can. He, his move to Lille gave him exposure to Champions League football as well. And despite being a defensive midfielder, Anana is a confident ball-carrying footballer and he's got good dribbling skills as well. Um, he's got a very good pass success rate of 82%. Um, and although born in Senegal, he's grown up in the Belgium and he's represented them as captain uh, in the under-21 league, uh, in the under-21 squad. And he's recently been called into the Belgium uh, senior squad, but yet to make his senior appearance. He radiates a calmness. He's big, he's fast, he's intelligent. He's got great technique, uh, two-footed, uh, understands tactics and natural feelings for space on the pitch. Now, I'm sure you've worked it out by now. Onana plays a similar position to Declan. Uh, and at the age of 20, he's considered to have a bright future ahead of him. Future again, if we buy someone like Onana in and we know that Declan's going to leave, you know, uh, uh, probably leave at the end of uh, next season. And I know the stories are out that he's not going to be signing the contract. Well, that's the worst kept secret anyway. Could it be another player that we could be planning for? Not only, you know, as a backup again this season, but as an alternative to uh, Socek and Declan when they're out of form or when, they're, or, or when they have an injury or whatever, but also looking a further ahead and a player that uh, can maybe take over from Declan Rice uh, at the end of next season. Right. Let's move on again. Now, uh, there was a lot of talk uh, about a week or so ago about Emmanuel Dennis. Apparently, we were linked to the four, uh, uh, Watford uh, striker, uh, but uh, the rumours have gone. Is that because we're now in for uh, his um, teammate, Jao Pedro? I don't know. The latest rumour is that this 20-year-old striker who signed from uh, to Watford from Fluminense uh, in January 2020 for a free of fee of uh, £3.5 million is the next player on our wanted list. 
He's made 74 appearances for Watford, scoring 13 goals plus five assists in total. And the last year when we got when Watford got relegated, he made 29 appearances in all competitions, scoring 16 goals, and he's uh, uh, of which he made just 16 starts. Sorry, and he scored four goals. So not a great return. To be fair, he's hardly pro- hardly prolific, uh, and I'm not certain why we'd want to spend anything up to 25 million pounds. Now I'll put a value of about 10 million, which might be more uh, uh, reasonable, but apparently in the stories that are being banded around, uh, uh, Watford are looking at 25 million pounds for him. Um, has he really sort of cut the mustard at Watford in the two and a half seasons that he's been there with them? I don't know. I don't want to be too dismissive of uh, Pedro. He arrived at Watford under a lot of hype. Uh, and it, and within the first few games, he rapidly scored seven goals for them. And it looked like it was going to be the next big thing. But after that blistering start it, start, it took him another season and a half to get another six goals. He's a tall, tough striker, likened to Everton's uh, Richarlison, who also developed at uh, Brazilian club Fluminense as well. He can play along the the whole front line, but got his chance to flourish as a striker when veteran player, um, and I can't remember his name, um, uh, got got injured. I I thought I had it written down, but clearly I haven't. But anyway, he got his opportunity through injuries uh, to play as a striker. um, And uh, he did reasonably well, as I said at the start. He possesses good skills, everything that you would expect a streetwise Brazilian footballer to have. He still has a contract uh, till 2025. Uh, with Watford. And as I said, it looks like they're demanding, if the rumours are true, £25 million for him. But I think uh, for £10 million, as an understudy to Antonio, then maybe. And finally, Moussa Diaby of Bayer Leverkusen, an attacking midfielder um, uh, who's been rumoured to be linked to us uh, only today. Uh, the day is Wednesday, the 1st of June. Um, look, another decent, I mean, very, very decent player uh, who plays in uh, the Bundesliga. Uh, developed through the PSG youth ranks. Uh, his uh, price is valued at the moment from his current club is anything like 50 odd million pounds. Um, now, he's on a much higher level uh, to Pedro in terms of stats uh, and obviously his price as well. 22 years of age attacking winger is one of the most coveted players around Europe at the moment. And there's speculation that his next move would be to a Champions League uh, uh, club. He's a product of the PSG Youth Academy, where he joined at the age of 13. And in 2016, he won the Titi Dior Award, which is a yearly accolade for the most promising player in the academy. He was with the French club through till 2019, uh, when he was then sold to uh, Bayer Leverkusen for a fee of around £13.5 million pounds. He made 34 appearances for the PSG senior team, scoring four goals with seven assists. But with mega rich uh, PSG uh, owners coming in, uh, they just wanted to create their own Galacticos, didn't they? So players like the Arby at the time, if they were going to get any playing time, had to move on elsewhere. 124 appearances for uh, Bayer Leverkusen uh, uh, so far, uh, with 35 goals and 37 assists in total. In the the season that just passed, he made 42 appearances uh, for Bayer, scoring 17 goals and 14 assists. That's a very, very good tally, a very decent tally in in a league that is quite a tough league. The Arby's left footed. And he spent most of the uh, most of his time initially playing on the left side of uh, attacking midfield for Bayer, um, but in his uh, in his early days. But uh, when new manager uh, Gerardo uh, Siona C- Gerardo Siona Sioane, I can't pronounce it, switched Diaby to the right side of midfield, he's progressed much better. Of the 17 goals he scored last season, six were from the left side and 11 from, were from the right side, uh, which seems to affirm uh, Siona's uh, tactical switch uh, paid off. Uh, there continues to be many similarities to the player with Jared Bowen, le- both left-footed, both cutting in on the left side. Uh, he's utilised in a great to great effect in a counter-attacking style of play, which has seen Bowen do well as well. He's got explosive speed uh, and he manages, he finds his uh, doing a lot of runs behind defences. One of the things that has improved is his goal scoring last season, which is his best goal return yet. He's a very good finisher, uh, which has been helped by the switch to the to the right side of midfield. Diaby also, also has also been capped five times by the French national squad, uh, making his debut last September. 
He's got a long-term contract with uh, Bayer till 2025. And if we value Boeing at around 50 odd million pounds, then you've got to be realistic and maybe value DRB in the, in, in the same, for the same amount of money. It would be a huge statement to make uh, to sign a player like this. But as I said, I think there are going to be a number of um, uh, Champions League clubs uh, that will come calling for him. But I can see the uh, I can see that the logic because, as I said in the month in the West Ham Weekly Show on Monday, um, if we're going to not going to be looking to buy a striker, and apparently the news out earlier today is that Moyes is not likely to buy a striker. You know, can you believe it? But uh, the reason for that is I think Moyes is looking at um, Jared Bowen being the, his next project to become the, the backup striker or the replacement uh, to uh, Antonio. And buying a player like Diaby, and I've talked about Lingard coming in, etc., gives Moyes the options to, to mix uh, players around and utilising uh, Bowen up front a lot more. That's it. That's the show. Thank you all for watching. Really appreciate it. Uh, if you like what you see and if you like what you hear and all that sort of stuff, uh, do um, subscribe to the channel. You can see the details below. Uh, go into youtube.com. Uh, just go to West Ham Voice on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification to be uh, told when I'm next on. And uh, thank you for watching. And, uh, and I'll see you soon with another show later in the week.